all the early families that settled in the Sand Hills very quickly became very fire wise as to how fire moved because at those times there were no fire suppression. Uh, only the families who lived here knew how to handle that. So it was a working knowledge that all the farmers, farm families in the Sand Hills had. A lot of that knowledge has been lost today. Fire has a negative connotation in, in with a, a, a good segment of the population because they hear about the catastrophic fires. So they, they see that as a negative. So when I'm burning today, I have to uh, be very careful at working with any neighbors who may not see fire the same way I do to make sure they understand that what I'm actually doing is not putting them at risk, but reducing some of the risk of wildfires coming through. And of course, uh, a very tangible thing that they're looking for is not having smoke on their laundry. So I have to make sure that they're aware of what I'm doing and I have to make sure I manage my smoke in a way that doesn't impact them negatively. Well, every year, before I go into my burn program, I remove all fuel that's fallen in the past year from all structures, from the house, from all the outbuildings, because this area where I am standing right now is the only piece on the whole farm that's not under fire management. So here I just keep all material out of the yard and start burning from here out. Well, I will go over with any uh, neighbors exactly what it is I plan to do, how I will conduct the fire, have fire breaks, and like I said, most of them have actually been here to see what it is I'm doing, and now they have a, a, just a level of trust with me that I know what I'm doing. Smoke is always the biggest concern when it comes to burning. I mean, we can do uh, everything we can to make sure our lines are safe, we have the right equipment, the right personnel, but depending on the history of fire on a tract of land, if there is a lot of organic matter there, you can pick up you know, a good bit of lingering smoke and that usually is what you're gonna get the most pushback from, from your neighbors in the local community is, is, is what to do with this smoke. So really there's nothing that you can do except educate the general population that the smoke is part of the process. There's really no other way around it. But when it comes to the application of the burn, knowing when to burn, where the wind directions are, what the mixing heights are, how the smoke is gonna lift out, time of day, all these things become crucial in making sure you don't smoke out your, your neighbors in the community. Each tract of land has a different prescription, which is determined by what you're trying to accomplish with that burn. This particular tract right here, I went in and planted these longleaf, burned, cleaned it up, planted these longleaf, and then for various reasons, this tract laid out of fire longer than I normally would have had. And what we have now is we have a lot of these hardwood mid-stories trying to come up. The goal of this tract of land is for straw raking. So these hardwoods in here prevent that from me from reaching that goal. So what we wanna do here with this burn is remove all this hardwood material. That presents uh, a, an opportunity and a little bit of a complication with this fire because since we laid out, it's been four years since this tract was burned. And in those four years, since I do have a stand of longleaf, they have been contributing quite a bit of fuel. So now the goal of this burn is to get it hot enough to take out this size hardwood without getting it hot enough to scorch and damage my longleaf. So that then dictates when and where and how I'm gonna execute this fire. So what I'm gonna be looking for is to find a day where my fuel moistures, which is a very important uh, component of a prescription, are high enough that all this fuel is not gonna combust at one time, but enough of it is going to ignite that will kill these hardwoods but not get hot enough to scorch the canopy. So when we decide to execute this fire right here, what we're gonna to have to take into consideration is not only the fuel load and fuel moisture, but topography of this tract. And as you can see, we have pretty good topography coming up this hill. So to execute this burn, I will be starting up on this end up here and backing it in until I get enough of a blackened area to make it safe. But then I'm gonna to wanna to go down and drop some other lines that will form a head fire to come in here and heat it up enough to take out these larger uh, oaks. 
One of the other considerations that you have when you have a large fuel layer like we do here is the smoke. And smoke is usually the um, part of the fire that becomes the most egregious to your neighbors. So since I have this, this level of fuel here, it is going to generate a lot of smoke. So I'm going to be looking for a day where I have a high, what we call a high lift. I want that smoke to go up. I don't want a lot of wind. And I want to, the smoke to move up out of my burn area and not go towards a neighbor's house. So this high fuel level is going to dictate that we have a day without light winds and enough lift opportunity to move the smoke out. I will probably time this fire to, uh, to have it so that in any, and we're almost in that time now, as these hardwoods start having the sap rise for leaf out is a very good time to, to burn those. Uh, we'll have the greatest opportunity to knock them back. So I'm going to be looking at a combination of air temperature, uh, air humidity, and fuel moisture in order to come up with that perfect mix that will generate the heat to do my job of getting these hardwoods out without adversely affecting the pine stand. We call this an end stand burn. And end stand burns are a little more tricky than other burns because there's a lot more variables in that particular fire that you're looking for. So the prescription for this particular tract is made a little more complicated by the fact that I have two opposing goals right here for this. I want to get it hot enough to kill these hardwoods, but not hot enough to damage my longleaf. The goal of this tract is for straw production. And to do that, I have to remove all these hardwoods and keep them out. So the burn cycle in here has to be frequent enough to keep those uh, at a minimum and open this up for, for uh, straw production. So I'll be looking for a combination of air temperature, fuel moisture temperature, light winds, and a high lift of, of uh, ability that day to get the smoke out of here because this much fuel is going to generate a lot, and these type of fuels are going to generate a lot of smoke. And if you don't have the right conditions, that smoke can then get into your neighbor's yard and that can, can be a little bit of a problem.